Hi. So last time I said I was going to talk a little bit more about control issues, and then I want to talk a little bit about OCD. But first, I noticed that I got a few new subscribers. I thank you for everybody who has subscribed to my channel, and I really appreciate those of you who actually watch my videos <laughs> um, all the way through. So thank you for that support. And what I talk about on my channel, I talk about trauma and abuse a lot, and it is called emotional awareness. And it's not like a boo-hoo, wah, wah, look it, I know how to cry, and I cry all the time, and I'm aware of my emotions, that those aren't the kind of emotions that I'm necessarily talking about. Although crying when you get real about shit is very healthy and it's very important. But it's about the fact that we do have an emotional layer to us when we experience something and we don't realize it. And that's the part that we don't ever really express to people because we, A, don't know how to do it because it takes a connection to that emotion first and foremost. You have to be aware of it. You have to see it and understand it before you can even connect to it. And then you have to learn how to express it. And then it needs to be accepted by the other person. And that's what's really hard is because a lot of times, I don't know about you, but at least for me, if I tell somebody how I'm feeling, oh my God, stop feeling that. Really? Don't feel like that. No, stop. No, you shouldn't be feeling that way every time. So guess what happens? I shut down. I'm like, hey, I'm not going to express myself to you anymore. So that means that we're not going to have a deeper connection that means I'm shutting down and that's not healthy and I don't like those kind of relationships. I don't encourage that. We need to listen to each other and say, you know, what? it's cool. Like, it's okay that you're feeling that way. I feel that way too. Or have you share something about yourself also, you know, depending on what the situation is. So it's easier for me if I just kind of give you examples. Um like that one I'll just say this because this happened to happen this week but um, I was playing basketball with one of my friends and we go and play every week and so then I was like okay so next week same time same court and then he was just like well I'm gonna go whether you whether you go or not and I was just like oh I'm sorry I thought that was kind of our thing that we because we always go together and I know that he didn't mean that in a mean way. I know this, but it zinged a little. I'm not going to lie. Cause I was just like, oh, well, fuck you, Rebecca. That's how it felt. I'm saying that's how it felt. I felt a little rejected. I'm not going to lie. And so I just got a little Ugh, like, all right, well, fuck you then. And then I got a little upset after that. But I had to sit there and I knew that upset me. So I was like, what are you feeling? Like, I felt a little rejected. I felt a little like, well, you know, if you don't exist, it doesn't matter. My life's not going to change. So who cares? Like, Rebecca doesn't matter. She's nothing. And you guys already know that that triggers me. And if you just subscribe, go watch the other videos because they all kind of piggyback off of each other. You know, I've seen my growth in the past year. That's how long I've been doing this. And I saw where I was at a year ago and... You know, I think my life has changed the most this past year, and I'm very happy about it. It's because I really learned how to connect to those emotions. Now, did my friend mean to do that? No. It's like, do I? does he deserve for me to be mad at him? No, because I know that he's not serious. I mean, I know that he values me as a person. That was my shit. I got triggered. I started to feel a little bit, you know, sad about it. And that's okay. That's the emotional layer that I'm talking about because that triggers the whole me never feeling like anybody wanted me growing up. Yes, it triggers things that deep in us and we don't even realize it. We always try to act like everything's okay, nothing's wrong, I don't want to tap into those emotions, my past is in the past. But the more you do that, the more you deny yourself growth and understanding and a connection to your true self, our true self is somebody that existed before years ago we were that you know the when I see like toddlers I'm like that was us at one point you know all those experiences have shaped us so connect to it and if somebody says oh my god you're feeling rejected that's so stupid fuck you 
That's how I was feeling. We need to be able to express those types of feelings and we need to be allowed to say it and feel it with each other. If we don't, we all end up just going to that dark place and feeling like nobody understands us because it's like we're not allowed to say anything and I hate that. So I'm really trying to encourage us to just say the shit that we're feeling and get around people that accept it. But uh, when I was younger, one of the things I used to do is I used to wash my hands compulsively. So OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, I'll let you guys kind of research that a little bit more. I think a lot of people know the general idea of what that is but for me I used to wash my hands until they started to bleed you know I'd wash them I'd go touch something and then I was like I just started to feel uneasy my hands are dirty your hands are dirty you need to go wash them again and so I'd go wash them again that's how it happens that's the anxiety that's that's trauma there's something there when I see somebody doing things like that or if they have you know super you know uh, like rituals that they do that are very, very precise, you know, and I see the OCD kicking in. I'm like, what's going on there? I know there's some kind of something happened. Like we don't just develop that overnight. We don't learn how to do things like that for nothing. So just be aware of that. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. Just connect to the emotions that are causing that. And I'm telling you that because there's a reason why you're doing things like that. Something else I did as an adult is I was a shopaholic. I would, if there were 10 shirts in 10 different colors, I would get all 10 shirts and then I would get the pants to match the shirt. Then I would get the socks to match. Then I would get the shoes to match. Then I would get the belt to match and I don't even wear belts. I have a bag of belts I never use, but it was like, I would come home and I'm like, I need that belt. I need that belt. I need that belt. And I'd go back and I'd get it. I didn't even realize like how much I was doing that to not feel anything because I didn't want to feel or think about, you know, the trauma and shit that's happened to me. And again, I've already told you guys uh, most of the things that have happened. And so you don't think that the two are connected, but they are. So it wasn't until I started going to therapy and then it was like, oh, okay, I was trying to avoid my feelings by shopping. So we avoid our feelings in so many different ways. It's up to you to figure out how you're avoiding yours. A lot of people stay busy, 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 busy. I'm always busy. I got to always be on the move. I always got to be doing shit and not in a healthy way. It's good to be motivated. It's good to be ambitious. That's different than somebody who's constantly busy, busy work, but they're never really doing shit. I have a friend like that. It's like, she acts like she's so fucking busy in life. And I'm like, what the fuck? You don't even do anything. And now that, you know, this whole quarantine and everything's happening, I'm like, you really don't have shit to do. You know what I'm talking about? Those people, like, they're always doing shit, but they ain't ever really doing shit. I think we all kind of know that person. And when I see people like that, the busy bodies, I'm like, you are disconnecting. And I, I recognize those patterns and... It's hard for me to be around those people sometimes because they can't connect on a deeper level and I'm not about that. I like connecting on deeper levels. Um, this week I was in a really dark, shitty place and I want to tell you kind of what had happened because it was nothing specific. No, it wasn't what my friend said. <laughs> it was just I felt dark and I felt it happening to me. I didn't care about anything. I got up. I was like, "Who? Ca I don't even, I don't care. I don't care about life. Why? What's the point? That's how I started to get. And I was like, what's going on? Then I started to get upset. Anger is normal when you're in the dark place because it's a way for us to feel something, some kind of spark. I feel alive. I need to feel something. But we're not even usually really angry at anything specific. We just, we want to feel something. So it's normal if you're dark and then you feel angry. Just know that. But we need to tap into the darkness. What were you feeling in the dark moment? Like I didn't matter. Like I don't belong anywhere to anybody. If I wasn't here, nobody who would even really care. It's like, okay, and... Like, nobody wants me. Like, nobody will call me or text me. Nobody wants to hang out with me. If I didn't exist, everybody else's life would go on. So how does that feel? Like, I'm unlovable. And, like, 
I don't matter. Like, I don't, why do I even exist? That's okay. Why was I feeling that, though? Because I noticed a pattern. I was hang I've been hanging out, doing a lot of really fun things with different people. But there are some people, and I think I've said this before, that do trigger me. They're not toxic, necessarily. But, like, my one friend, I'm not going to lie, she's, and I we've talked about this. So it's not even, like, she already knows. She's completely dead inside, completely empty. She's probably one of the most deadest people on the inside that I've ever met. But she knows how to charm people. I mean, when she's around you, like, you won't know it until you start hanging out with her regularly. And then it's like, oh, you're what they call depressed. But I don't like that word because I, because then we don't really want to hold ourselves accountable for our feelings, which it's up to us to do that, which she doesn't. She'll just sleep. It's like, well, do you want to do anything about it? It's like, no. It's like, do you want to change your life? No. It's like, you just want to feel like shit all the time? Yeah, I was like, okay, well, good for you. Like, I'm not like that, but I've known her forever. So it's like, I'm not just going to, I don't want to talk to you anymore. It's just, I notice when I'm around her a lot and then a couple other people, they're all kind of dead inside, unmotivated, just don't give a shit about anything. And it's like, ugh. so I start kind of absorbing that energy and that triggered me because it was like, it started to make me feel dark and it's not their fault. I have to take responsibility for that. That was my shit. I got triggered and I have to take responsibility for what I'm going to do with those feelings. Remember, we have to hold ourselves accountable. So I was like, well, what's the solution right now? What can I even do about this? Cause I can't change them. They don't want to change. And I, and I don't need to, it's like, I need to just accept them for who they are. I love her to death, but what can I do? not hang out with her as much. I already don't really have the highest expectations because she doesn't ever ask me to hang out. It's just kind of like I already know how the relationship's going to go. She calls me at a specific time. You know, if she's going to call me, it's on her way home from work because when she gets home, remember, she's too busy to call or do anything after that. I'm like, okay. So it's just very robotic to me. It's very routine. I know exactly what it's going to be. And that triggers me because I grew up with the robots. And to me, when I see that, it's I see deadness. I see a disconnect. So how do I connect to that? I can't, not on a deep level. So I struggle with that. I do. And this week, it just I struggled with that a lot. And it put me in a real funky, shitty-ass mood. But you know what? I have control over how I'm going to get myself out of that mood. And then that helps. And I have control over what I'm going to do in this situation. That's a good, healthy kind of control. Because we have to protect our emotions, too. And so setting good boundaries, not hanging out with certain people as often. It sucks, but it's it helps. And that's a way for us to protect ourselves. And that's a good thing. That's a healthy way to do it. So setting those boundaries being aware of our patterns, continue to look into that. And I'm going to continue to talk about these things next time.